feel they said, you know, almost every employee said this, it would just make me feel a little bit more valued. And you know, so we want senior managers to make that connection with employees because it will have a really big impact on employee engagement. Um, just to share with you quickly uh, some of the ratings for senior manager communication in my research, um, it varied enormously. 77% was the highest rating for senior manager communication in the financial services organization in my study. However, it was only 37% rating in the two local authorities. And the overall impression that I got from my research was that employees said that senior managers are often just not very visible. Um, so these are simple, really simple things actually to, um, um, to, to sorry about slides, these are very simple things to actually put into practice. Um, it just takes time, it doesn't take huge resources in terms of budget to, to, to change some of these things, it's just time and focus. I'm going to just pause very quickly there, I did say I would um, um, stop at various points and so I, I'm going to pause there now because that's really um, an overview of the, of the model if you like, the AVID model. I'm going to um, continue after this and share some more data about channels um, and senior managers and voice. But if there are any comments um, that anyone would like to um, pop in, or if we've got any that we've got so far, comments, thoughts, queries, questions, um, do, do, do pop them in the chat room now, and um, I'll be happy to, to pick those up. Uh, if you can, you can. Uh, if you wish, you can uh, write in the questions box or in the chat box, and I will help with reading them out loud to, to Kevin. But right now, uh, Kevin, there are no questions at this moment. Okay, um, I'll just pause because I'm sure I'm sure there must be some some questions. Not maybe not questions, some comments or thoughts. I mean, how how how? So I suppose as a as a model. Does this make sense to, to, to those of you that are that are online? Does it does it does it seem a logical kind of what what would be the difficulties that you might be thinking of? What what are the issues or challenges that you you might be kind of identifying if you wanted to put this model into place? Is there anything that you think will be challenging to do in your organization? I'd be really interested to hear. Well, while we uh, wait for some of the questions or comments, um, uh, I see one hand raised, um, so I will read them out loud. So um, Martin Flagg is asking, hi Kevin, on your point about senior managers meeting staff in person, do you have any evidence about whether they are more effective if they are from the same business area as the employees? Thanks, Martin Flagg. Oh, hi Martin, thanks for the question. Um, no, I don't really, uh, my research didn't address that particular question, to, to, to be honest, but I suppose just reflecting on what some of the employees did say to me, um, I, I'm, I'm guessing that they would probably want to see a senior manager who could express something about the organisation at a very corporate level, but be able to um, relate it to the division or part of the organization uh, that the employees were working in. So it's maybe not, not so much where the senior manager works, but their ability to be able to translate, if you like, corporate information into relevant and meaningful uh, information for the team of people that that senior manager is talking to. So that it sometimes may, may be that, that that does require someone who's got intimate knowledge of that particular unit, but not necessarily, I don't think. Good question. Thanks, Martin. Uh, we have two more questions. So, uh, Maria Garton Frail, I'm sorry if I'm not um, pronouncing this correctly, is asking to what extent vision, value, strategies are imposed and how can we make employees embrace them as something part of their company and personal objectives? I think that's another really good question. I think, you know, I think there's renewed interest in purpose. You know, the purpose of the organisation, which you know, um, is perhaps more meaningful sometimes than a vision or mission, um, which can be you know sometimes you know, a little bit kind of vague in terms of you know very corporate in, in the way that vision and mission statements are expressed. So, um, I, I you know I think it's more important to talk about values and purpose. Um, and I you know the thing about mission statements, vision statements, values, purpose statements, and so on. Really, I, I'm a I'm a great believer that they you know, we should involve employees in discussing them. 
So I'm not suggesting for a second that you know an organisation is a democracy and we have to kind of co-create all of these things. You know that, that that's simply you know probably not very possible. So some small organisations you know can do this and are very good at doing it. Um, but I do think there's a there's an element of you know the senior management team saying look we're in the process of kind of revisiting or reviewing our vision, our, our, our values and our purpose. You know purpose here. Here are some things that we as a senior management team firmly believe in. This, this is what we think you know, we should be focused on and this is the way we think you know, the people in this organisation should be behaving and working. You know, absolutely go along with that but I think you know, why not have some dialogue with the senior management team, go and have some dialogue with employees and, and get their input to that and get their kind of thought process into that because you know, I've seen many times vision and mission statements sent you know, literally in a cascade team briefing and read out you know, in a team meeting um, you know, and, and they're often very, you know, very kind of, you know, similar statements, you know, um, honesty, respect, um, and so on and so forth, you know, and kind of, you know, and it, it gets a little bit lost really in that process. So it comes back to, you know, a voice a bit, I think. And I think the employees will have much more, you know, that they'll feel that they'll kind of, you know, the values that have been established for the organization, if they are established, are something that they've had a bit of a say in. So that's how I think you know, we should go about it, but we shouldn't really confuse it. It's not a complete democracy. But I mean, senior managers should should be prepared to sort of give some broad statements and be open to having those tweaked or developed a bit. Why not? Thank you for the question. Okay, now we have two more. Uh, Laura is asking, um, hi, do you have any examples of companies who have put in place regular communication from senior managers to their teams and how that improved employee engagement? Yes, well, that's a very good question. I, I, I think the, the honest answer to that is that case studies about internal communication and employee engagement are often difficult to um, to find. I mean, the Engageful Success Report is a bit old now; it's two thousand and nine, but it does have lots of mini little case studies, so some very good practice uh, that's going on. And same for the Engage for Success website too. There are little case studies there. Um, Another, you know, go to, go to um, institutes such as the IABC, other institutes, look for their case studies there too. Um, I think what I'll, I'll do after, after these little questions, I'll go on and uh, show the research from my, my, my PhD research which demonstrates the correlations between some of these things I've been talking about and employee engagement. So in a way, I've got some case studies, some small scale case studies here, which I'm going to share with you in the next 10 or 15 minutes or so. But thanks for the question, good question. I wish there were more good case studies out there. Have we got time and, for one more, Rome, Yeah, yeah, uh, let, let's do one more. Um, so Sarah, uh, Sarah McCauley uh, is asking, uh, did you come across many common blockers to implementing these? such as line managers versus their perception of their role as a communicator or obstacles to encouraging employee voice? Yes, many, <laughs> many, many challenges, many obstacles. And I, you know, I talk to students um, every year about this and they, you know, they tell me about the challenges that they face in their organizations. And there are many various challenges from you know, senior management understanding and belief in the value of this kind of stuff from line managers' ability, you know, to communicate. But I think, you know, what, what I'm trying to suggest here is that um, we, we're not expecting line managers to be, um, you know, um, performers. You know, they're not supposed to be, you know, um, professional communicators at all, not, nor senior managers, actually. You know, employees are actually, you know, they're not really expecting a super polished presentation in that kind of way. What they're telling me is they just want conversations that are relevant and meaningful and conversations give them an opportunity to have a say. So that really is a completely different skill set. You know, senior managers often fear, you know, they've got to, um, you know, produce this super polished performance. And I know that, you know, that can, that can be useful uh, in certain situations. But employees are actually, you know, that's not actually what they're looking for. But other challenges around voice are particularly strong about, about you know, fear often from senior managers about what employees might say and that they don't want to hear. That was um, the key issue. And from employees, they uh, many employees said to me they had a fear of speaking out. So, you know, they, in their organisations, they were fearful that if they said something, there may be some consequences which were, were unspoken. But they, may, they, they, fit, they had a strong fear that something may, may happen in some kind of way, you know, that, you know, 
whatever they might be in the, in their in their kind of heads. But so it's this kind of getting past these fears from both senior managers, line managers, and employees, really, which is very difficult and it's a very tough um, job for us to do as internal communication managers. Thank you. Very good question. I I, in, I can see time is 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 creeping yes. on. I'm going to carry on now. That's okay. Please keep the questions coming. It's really, really good to hear the questions. So I wanted to share quickly some of the research about channels. Um, now, I know we're fascinated with channels in internal communication. In, in my research, this is what employees told me. Remember, this is 2,000 plus employees in five different organizations. And these findings were consistent in each of the five organizations. So the most helpful channels employees reported to me were team meetings and email. Now, we, I think we, we smile when we see email because you know everyone complains about email overload and employees did complain to me about email overload. However, employees said to me that emails they're in control of, they can read them when they want to. Um, and they did like the, the weekly email with the kind of roundup of news items that they could scroll down quickly and then choose whether they click the link for more information. In the middle, intranets and senior managers, that, you know, I've talked already about senior manager town halls. Um, but some of the issues with, with, with those. And, and intranets are, are kind of, you know, employees said to me that intranets were often difficult to navigate and they found it hard to get to the information they wanted very quickly. And that's the issue with intranets. And low on the helpfulness was videos, blogs, and text messages and print. Well, that may just be a quirk of the organizations that I was uh, doing my research in. So in other organizations, those kind of channels may be perceived as more helpful. Um, so we can't really overgeneralize these findings, but I thought you'd find them useful. Indeed, there are there is other research um, out there. Indeed, there is a report last year produced by Newsweaver said that 99% of people are using email and 85% are using electronic communication. So those seem to be the predominant channels. And of course, team meetings with line managers, you know, do go down very well. Um, the, the, the point here is about internal social media, or what we, we might call enterprise social networks. Um, and um, on the handouts for this webinar, there are two handouts, so the, 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 a, a handout for these slides, but I've also added a handout for some research I did last year on enterprise social networks. And we find that these are still very, perhaps, slow to take off inside organizations. Yeah? I'm talking about Yammer. Jive, you know, IBM Connections, of course, you know, Workplace is a new one that's uh, around from Facebook. So um, we're still getting to grips with these. Indeed, so for my research, it looks like usage in the UK is sort of anything between 40 and 57 percent um, and growing, but we're still not quite there. Now, it's still taking a little while to, to really get embedded inside organizations. One of the things I think that emerged from my research and I wanted to focus on was understanding what information employees want from their organization. A lot of the research that's conducted in the field and a lot of our own um, internal research you know, we're doing in organizations is very focused on channels. But we should be asking many more questions about content because it's content that really that employees are most interested in as long as they can get it through uh, one of the channels that you know, they like using. Um, that's less of an issue. So we, we, we really should decide and think about asking employees what it is they want to, to know. And when I asked this question in the research that I did um, in my, for my PhD, I'm picking out two of the, two, for, for senior managers and line managers, the top two interest areas. So employees, without, you know, almost without exception, across, across the organizations, 94 to 97% of employees wanted or were, were interested in plans for the future of the organization and then you know a bit of a, a bigger range but also achievements of the organization now these are things as i've said already should really be the the, the topics that senior managers own and communicate um, when it comes to line manager communication employees are very interested to know how their job fits into the organization which is as i said earlier this question about alignment and not not surprisingly they're also interested in recognition for their efforts. So, I, th I mean, I really would recommend um, in your own organizations doing this kind of research so that you know what information employees are really interested in inside your organization. Um, it's, a, it's a fundamental thing, but I think we should do much more of it. 
And just to give you a quick example, of course, this is not so surprising. In my research, employees rated line managers much more highly for communicating than senior managers. And as I think I've already kind of um, suggested, um, so, you know, a lot of our work should be focused on getting senior managers much more involved in the communication process. Um, and you know, that really would have a big impact on employee engagement. I'm going to just quickly share this slide with you about correlations. Um, correlations are a way of doing statistical analysis which enables you to understand which aspect of internal communication is most strongly associated with organizational engagement in this case in my study. So this idea that you know, line managers are the most important people in the communication process that certainly I was brought up on in, in my internal communication career. You know, actually, you can see from this um, slide here, they are, in, in terms of the, the, these four aspects of communication, the least strongly associated aspect of internal communication. The, to explain the slide, the, the numbers um, shown um, um, are the correlations, and a correlation is expressed as a number between 0 and 1. So if you get a correlation of 0.55, um, as we have here for employee voice, or 0.54 for senior manager comms, then that can be taken to be a reasonably strong association between those things and engagement. Um, 0.43, which is the level of um, correlation for line manager communication, is still a good level of association. Um, but the point I want to make here really on this slide is it is slightly lower than the associate the strength of this here, strength of the association between senior manager communications and organizational engagement. So that might surprise some of us on this webinar, and I think it's um, a really important fact that we, we we should take into account in our internal communication planning. And it goes back to the importance, as I've mentioned throughout really this webinar, of getting senior managers much more involved in the communication process. And of course, I've already mentioned employee voice, 0.55, which was the strongest aspect of communication that was associated with employee engagement. So the, 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 the rationale from this data, it can be a bit difficult to get your head around sometimes, but the rationale from a correlation is that it shows you which aspects of communication, and if you were to focus on and improve, then you would get a, a corresponding improvement in the level of engagement inside your organization. So really this, this data is like gold dust, I think, for, for organizations who are wanting to improve, improve their levels of engagement because it gives you a bit of um, insight into which things you should be focusing your attention on in your internal communications plans. So um, to summarize really, and I do hope we can have a few more questions, I wanted to share with you my uh, approach to research and my belief that research is fundamental to professional internal communication practice. And we should do much more of it, I think, in internal communication, um, you know, because I do believe often we are basing a lot of our work on gut instinct or you know, assumptions. And that can, be, that can be very worthwhile. I mean, I'm a big believer in sort of instinct, but sometimes it might not be quite right. And the importance of um, research really comes through in some of the data I think I've shared with you on this webinar, some things you may not have found surprising, other things you may have found a little bit more surprising, you may not have you know, um, assumed that that would be the case, certainly around senior manager communication perhaps, and line managers. Anyway, I'm going to share with you um, what I would suggest to be the framework for um, internal communication research inside your organization. So what I'm suggesting here is the sort of categories of questions that you would um, put into your questionnaire. Now, I, as I probably hinted earlier, I'm not a big believer in a, an annual survey or audit, an annual employee engagement survey, or an annual internal communication survey. I'm, I'm much, uh, much more uh, interested in what I would call pulse surveys, so monthly surveys uh, where you get a regular touch point with your employees. But the key thing, you know, with any pulse survey is to make sure you're asking the right questions. So starting with channels, do ask your employees which channels they find most useful. Um, and then a couple of questions about information, which I think can be very useful to um, develop what would be called the, uh, an information gap. So question two, what organizational topics are employees interested in? And then question three, ask them how well informed they are on the topics that they're saying they're interested in. 
you know, and that would give you a bit of a gap to, to show you whether or not employees are feeling well informed on the topics that they're most interested in. Then of course senior manager communication, already touched upon that. Um, sometimes I've you know, found that organisations are a little bit reluctant to ask questions for, for employees to, to rate senior managers around about their communication. Well, I think, you know, I don't really uh, understand why senior managers should be wary about that at all. I mean, it's a very important part of their role. Um, and line managers too. Um, but different aspects of communication. So the question for senior managers is their ability to communicate about important organizational issues, where I think the, the question for line managers is how well, obviously, how well they're doing their day-to-day -day team communication, but more importantly, uh, for employee engagement, how well do they put corporate, uh, corporate communication topics into a local context? Then a couple of questions on voice, opportunities, question six, and then more importantly, question seven, whether or not views expressed are treated seriously. And then here's the clever bit for um, the uh, statistical analysis. Questions 8, 9, and 10 really give you information about different levels of employee engagement. Question 8 is what we would call cognitive. What do employees think about it? Question 9 is um, uh, about um, emotional engagement, what employees feel about the organization. And then question 10 is the really important one. What are they going to be doing to help the organization achieve its objectives? And when you, when you design your questionnaire in this way, you can do those clever correlations that I mentioned earlier, which will tell you which of the questions one to seven are most associated with um, improvements in employee engagement. Okay, I think uh, I've come to the end of the slideshow, so I, I do hope that that was um, interesting, at least thought-provoking, um, and maybe useful too um, for those of you working in internal communication uh, and as a kind of guide, if you like, to what I would call good practice. So I do hope we might have a bit, a bit of time for any final questions or comments that you might have um, on what I've said today. Kevin, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Um, we do have two more questions right now. Uh, one of them is from Dana Poole asking, do you think the role of the senior manager needs to change and should internal communication spend more time coaching and educating, uh, educating them on corporate or change messages? Well, thanks Dana, that's another cracking question and um, yes, you might, <laughs> I suppose you won't be too surprised to, uh, to learn that I do think we should be doing that. Um, I, I do think our role should be um, to coach, guide, um, and help support senior managers to take their responsibility for communication much more seriously. You know, I do, I do think that um, senior managers are very, very busy people. You know, employees in my research said they understood why they didn't see their senior managers more often because they understood they're busy people. But, you know, I think that the evidence here in my research is very clear very clear indeed that senior managers taking a little bit more time to actually go out and be more visible, be more chatty. You know, it's not about standing up on stage making, you know, uh, super, you know, professional um, presentations. That, and that, is, that can be done, but it's m more important to just be visible, be available, be chatty, be open, be informal, um, and do that kind of, even if it's half an hour a week, um, that would, you know, over a year, that would that would soon add up to quite a few sort of mini conversations. So yes, Dan, the, the answer is absolutely a resounding yes. I think we should actually stop doing some of the stuff that we we are doing day by day. Um, you know, s you know, sending out stuff. Stop doing some of that. And make the time in our diaries to go and see the senior managers that we're working for, and then work with them over time. Because obviously, this is not an easy, you know, one hit. With, you know, kind of operation. We need to build their trust over time and show the benefits, the business cases, and also you know feed back some of the things that you know um, employees will say when 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 senior managers do get out there. So yes, to big yes to that one. Thank you. So uh, one more question uh, from Martin Flag. Um, Kevin, do you have any tips? please, on how to leverage the value of employee voice with senior leadership teams. Any tips? Well, 
I mean, I think the you know um, the tip really is just to get out there and start doing it slowly, slowly, you know, um, little by little, really. You know, it's it's it's, it's um. I mean, my experience of, of running some employee voice sessions back when I was working in in B T. Um, it takes a lot of time for senior managers to come on board with the idea, make the time in their diaries, go out and listen and talk. Um, and some some senior managers are more kind of comfortable <laughs> in those scenarios than others. And you kind of so so you need to you know try and dip your toe in the water, try try a few, see how they go, and then work slowly, slowly. You know, I think we, we shouldn't be over ambitious about employee voice. We should we should be prepared to take. You know, it's going to to understand that it's going to take time, and do it slowly, slowly. You know, but the the data, and you know, you can see probably from my presentation today, I'm a big believer in data, but not just data. It's not about you know um, the data, but the data is very clear and evident. Some senior managers, you know, will be swayed at least slightly by the evidence in the data. Others, it will take a more kind of you know uh, building of relationship um, approach. Uh, with them, so I don't know. My only tip is really just go out there and start doing it. Dip the toe in the water, have a go, but don't give up too soon either, because you know you won't suddenly get employee voice going in a big way in any organisation. You know, in 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 a short time scale, it's going to take you know a long period of time. But be patient. Thanks, Martin. Again. Uh, thank you. Uh, next question is from Michelle. Uh, in an organization where it is not structured with a heavy emphasis on line manager responsibility, who should this line on external communication fall to? Um, okay, well that's an interesting question. I, I, I suppose, you know, because I presented this in a very formal way and, and made the kind of, um, you know, categories line manager and senior manager, I mean that probably just reflects the nature of the organisations that I was working with. They were you know, pretty hierarchical, actually, those organisations. You know, so um, in, in other kinds of organisations, I, I, you know, those terms may not be uh, appropriate at all. Um, I'm not so sure it really, you know, necessarily depends on the breakdown between senior manager and line manager necessarily in the organisation. So we don't have that kind of structure. And really, what is, as long as employees are getting both aspects of the, the communication process. So as long as employees are you know, having communication with somebody that um, is where, where the topics of conversation are focused on their work in their team that week, and where they're getting information from somebody else or the same person or a different person that enables them to understand what's going on you know, um, in the bigger organization. It doesn't really matter so much about who the individual is. As long as employees trust the person that's speaking to them, and as long as they believe and know that that person is the person that's speaking with authority about the topic that they're, that they're, they're discussing. So, I mean, good question, interesting question about that, really. I mean, I, I, you know, I think many organisations are moving to flatter structures, of course, have, have been for many a time. And I, I suppose I wouldn't necessarily be wedded to this division between line manager and senior manager going forward at all. Um, good question. I need to think about that. Thank you. Uh, next question is from Meek. Um, did you also try to classify their findings according to generations of employees? Um, example, look at the differences between millennials and Generation Y. Uh, you say email still seems to be a much valued channel, but shouldn't organizations be future looking and look at what will engage the next generation workforce? Well, absolutely, of course. And so, to, to answer your question, no, I didn't um, cut the data by um, age groups. Um, so, partly um, because that wasn't um, my um, main interest in doing the research. That's not to say that it isn't an interesting question. It is, um, but I was more interested in my research in showing a uh, linkage between different aspects of internal communication. And employee engagement because I don't think there is much research out there, much academic research anyway, that establishes this link. And you might think well, it's a pretty obvious link, and it is, but you know to actually establish it in the academic literature I think is important for us as a profession. But you know, so I, I'm I, I'm a great believer in you know um, less email. <laughs> um, I, you know, I've read about the demise of email for a very very long time, and it's not going uh, anywhere. Uh, right now, 
But, you know, and I hope that, you know, organizations will start to use internal social media much more and get used to it because I do think it generates much more informality in communication by the nature of the channel itself. You know, it tends to be more formal when we write an email maybe than we write a post, you know, um, on, um, you know, a, a social media platform. And I think that in itself is a, is, is a good enough reason to use uh, in, internal social media, media more, enterprise social networks more. And I do hope that it will happen. Um, I'm a believer in it. Um, it's just that I'm also a realist and I understand that organizations take time, you know, to move away from communication systems that they do find, you know, pretty useful day to day. Um, I don't know the answer to this, to, to be quite frank, how we shift from, you know, email and electronic communication to enterprise social networks. I mean, in the, in the research that I did last year and the paper I, I shared with you, um, there's some you know, strong indicators about how you introduce a new kind of uh, Yammer platform or whatever the platform is and how you keep the momentum going. You know, but I, I, I'm still not sure, I still find that employees then have, you know, what they tend to do is they still keep their email going alongside, you know, it's how we switch off the email, that's the challenge. Good question, thank you for that. And we have one more, um, the last one uh, for now uh, from Julie. Uh, how about using communication as an objective uh, in appraisals for managers? Are you aware of any organizations that have done this? Well, I, another good question, but I'm, you know, I suppose, you know, I'm, I'm slightly wary of setting, you know, specific objectives around communication. Um, I understand that that can drive behaviors inside organizations. And it may be that we have to get more towards this kind of where, you know, uh, clear expectations are expressed within um, personal objectives and appraisal systems. But I think it can be quite difficult to actually assess in some respects. Um, I'm, I'd so I, my answer probably would be, on reflection, I, I'd, I would probably err towards um, gentle persuasion and kind of encouragement and support and coaching rather than making it a formal objective. But, you know, I may be wrong about that. Good question. Thank you. Um, I think we're out of questions, actually. Um, maybe uh, uh, we, can, we can wait for a little bit uh, if there's any other. And in the meantime, uh, I will use this opportunity to mention uh, our uh, Eurocom conference. Uh, let me just switch the screen, just a second. I wanted to show you uh, this because it's a, it's a discount code. I hope you can see it because my screen is all black now. No, apparently it's, it doesn't want to work. Uh, do you see the screen right now? Maybe if you can mention it in the chat. So, um, even if you can't see it, because this technology is today is not working with me very well, uh, I wanted to mention that uh, in the end of March, so 27 and 28, we have a conference called Eurocom. Uh, and it's, uh, I think, one of the Europe's uh, leading events for business communicators. Uh, you can check uh, at ibcmina.com. You can check the uh, speakers. You can check the program. Uh, and also, um, I think you'll be happy to know that uh, with the with the link that you will get this recording, uh, you will also get a discount code, which is. Uh, 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 valid until the end of February, so February 28th, and it's good for IABC members and IABC non-members, so we're hoping also to uh, meet some of you who are maybe not IABC members right now, but interested in internal communications and all the other topics that we're going to talk about. Um, and the, the theme of the, of the conference is transformation, which I think and we think that um, it's quite relevant in, in these times. Uh, so let me check if we have any, any more questions. Yes. Okay. Thank you for, to everyone who, who, um, who answered that uh, you can see the presentation. 
let me just check if there are any questions. Uh, Saren Polly is asking, is this a measurable model? Yes, abso absolutely. Thanks for the question again. Yeah, abs absolutely. It's a measurable model. I think, you know, the 10 um, questions that I shared with you, the ICQ 10, and sort of questions that you can link back to the model because they are all about alignment, voice, um, identification and discussion. So the way of measuring the model would be to um, develop that ICQ 10 uh, list of uh, questions for sure. Um, of course, it's not just 10 questions. Um, as I explained to you, in my research, it was a survey with 130 questions. Well, that would be too much for a pulse survey. But I think, you know, you can ask 20, 25 questions in a pulse survey. Um, it would only take five minutes, probably uh, five to 10 minutes, maybe, um, for employees to complete. So, you know, for that, for those 10 categories of questions, I have two or three for each one, um, and you get some amazing data. Really, really incredible data. And if you've got someone in your organization who can do correlations, even better. <laughs> I think we're at the end of questions, and I need to tell you that uh, there are a lot of uh, thank yous and uh, super interesting and uh, this kind of comments. Uh, and I would like to thank you, uh, Kevin, uh, for sharing your your knowledge and it was really interesting and informative and uh, it was actually one of uh, the uh, uh, most um, popular uh, webinars so far for IBC Mina so thank you so much for for uh, sharing this with us. Oh, no problem. Thank you for inviting me I really enjoyed it and some great questions thanks for the questions. Yes, and of course, thank you to the attendees, and uh, stay tuned. I hope you see, uh, we see each other in, at Euracom in London, 27th and 28th uh, March. And uh, of course, uh, on, the, on the next webinar, stay tuned. We'll uh, keep you posted. Goodbye. Thank you, Kevin. Bye.